Hi everyone. Today is kind of a cloudy day. It's probably going to rain and every computer engineer knows that days like that are perfect for building a home server. And this is what we're going to be doing today. I've been using a laptop motherboard and a docking station as a home server for like about a couple of months now. It's a fun project, but it's not really powerful enough for my use cases. I'm using my home server mostly as a NAS and as a Plex server. Even though Plex system requirements state that 2000 pass mark score will be enough to transcode one full HD stream, my X20 motherboard couldn't really do that. So today we're going to be doing a huge upgrade to that solution. And as you can see, I have all the components ready and they all came in mail now. Motherboard just came in, as a matter of fact. And first I want to tell you a little bit about how I came to build this exact build, how I came to buy these exact components. So there were a few options that I was considering. First, of course, pretty obvious, old Optiplex PCs. I think you can get one for about $50 if you're lucky. But unfortunately, those were quite power hungry. Not as power hungry as a proper server, but still, I would like to keep my power consumption low. So I started looking for other solutions. Other obvious option would be, of course, SPC, like ARM-based uh, small PCs like Raspberry Pi or Rock 64 and this also seems to be a good option on the surface but those are unfortunately not powerful enough. Those would not handle any kind of transcoding. Streaming is fine but as soon as you need to transcode something things just go south, like really south. <laughs> and I'm watching some movies in German or in French sometimes and I need subtitles and subtitles almost always mean transcoding and my X220 motherboard just couldn't handle sometimes and I had to wait for it to buffer etc. So I would like to avoid that. Obvious option will be proprietary NAS solution like Synology or Synology and all those pre-built NAS solutions. Those unfortunately are not a good option as well. They do have Plex application, almost all of them have a Plex option and they're pretty good for a file server but unfortunately not powerful enough for a media server. Those mostly support a proprietary ARM CPU and you can't really play around when it comes to installing a different distribution of Linux, so I decided I shouldn't go for that either. And last but not least, uh, another option would be to buy a rack server. Uh, those are usually Intel Xeon powered, they're huge and noisy and unfortunately consume a lot of power. And that's exactly the reason why I didn't go for that either. There are of course newer models which are more low power but those are pretty expensive and I'd like to keep things budget. So at the end this is the build that I decided to go with and I'm gonna tell you exactly why I picked these components and let's start with the CPU. This is AMD Athlon 200GE. This is a pretty low power CPU. The TDP is 35 watts and it idles at about 10 to 15 watts and motherboard that I chose is A320M HDV by ASRock. A320 is the cheapest chipset that you can buy for AM4 based CPUs and I decided to not go for B450 or other chipsets because I don't need the overclocking functions or RGB or anything like that and this motherboard was just enough for me. Uh, for the RAM, I decided to go with a crucial DDR4 8GB. This motherboard only has two RAM slots, and I didn't go for two sticks of 4 gigs because I might want to upgrade to 16 gigs in the future. We never know, and it's better to stay safe. For the boot drive, I picked up this 128GB M.2 SATA SSD from Hunix or Hynix. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. This is going to be our boot drive and what you're going to install. Arch Linux for the storage drive. We have Seagate, two terabytes hard drive, which I already had in my main PC, but I decided to put it in my home server. I know Seagate are not really known for their reliability, but as far as I've heard, they do okay hard drives now. And I know this is not a NAS grade drive, but when I'm building a professional NAS and there's not going to be any mission critical content on this one. I'm going to store movies, which in case of failure can be legally obtained again from liable and legal sources. So that's not a problem for me. And last but not least, 
This is an off-brand case that I picked up on eBay for about 14 euros. This already has a power supply. This is 300 watts power supply. Again, I don't know the brand. I like to live a risky life, so that's why I picked this up. This one didn't have um, a placeholder for 5.25 inch uh, slot. So what you see now, it's basically a piece of black cardboard so that there's no gaping hole in front. And I might buy at 5.25 inch to 3.5 inch adapter so I can put an extra hard drive when my storage for legally obtained movies runs out. So yeah, basically that's it and well, now we're gonna put everything together and as usual I'd like to warn you that this is not a PC building guide, I am not a professional computer engineer, thank you very much, let's go. Now before you all start leaving angry comments about how I forgot to put thermal paste, this cooler is a stock cooler, it already comes with thermal solution pre-applied, so this is why I didn't apply any. Oh yeah, forgot to say, uh, the reason why I didn't put the rear plate, the one that the, the I.O. shield, is because the motherboard didn't come with one. This was a very cheap deal, it was a refurbished motherboard for about 30 euros, so I'm okay with it like an I.O. shield. I'm not gonna transport it anywhere anytime sooner, so yeah. Okay, now it's time to connect all the power supply and case cables here, and this is one of the most tedious tasks, of course. Anyone who has ever built a computer knows that those front panel connectors are a pain in the ass, but this is a pain in the ass that we have to get through together. Right, um, I think we're done with the build. Um, as you can probably see, it's a, it's a mess. It's a tangled mess of cables, but this is what you get with cheap cases and you get what you pay for. I don't personally mind the mess with cables because I'm not planning to service this PC very often. I might put an extra hard drive in there um, as soon as this one is overfilled with legally downloaded content. Yeah, basically I wanted to build a very cheap, very low power um, home server PC and well, I think um, my task here is completed. And now let's connect it to the power supply and the monitor and see if the, the thing even posts. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is moment of truth. Please cross your fingers. Okay, that sounds like a running PC. Let's see if it posts. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Oh, wait. Yes, finally. Whew. 
Right, our prayers have been answered and it posted. Would you look at that? We have a bias screen. Okay, so basically our build is finished. The only thing I need to do now is to install Arch Linux and to replicate my old home server setup. Install Nextcloud, Plex and maybe some other stuff. But for now, this video is finished. We have built a very cheap, very low power PC. I'm not gonna say right now how good it is because I don't know and I'm going to do an update video once I set everything up and get everything up and running. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.